Mr. President, I thank you for the opportunity to address the Security Council with regard to the violence and turmoil that has recently befallen Myanmar's Rakhine State and the ensuring humanitarian situation. I have listened carefully to the statements made by the Distinguished Secretary General and the representatives of the member states of the Council. The common thread that runs through the commentaries is the illusion that something is rotten in the state of Rakhine. Assertions in the media that a campaign of terror has been unleashed in northern Rakhine and that unspeakable crimes have been committed against innocent people have only served to heighten the concern of the international community. While such assertions might appear reasonable at first glance, to a lay observer, expert observers with knowledge of the history of Rakhine and of the history of Myanmar and exposure to the propaganda tactics of terrorists will see such comments for what they really are, subjective and emotionally charged accounts. Nevertheless, we understand the concern of the international community and take serious note of it. Mr. President, I would like to take this opportunity to apprise you of the situation obtaining on the ground and of our efforts to end the violence, assist all innocent civilians affected by the turmoil and plans to find a lasting solution to the daunting challenges we face. First, we recognize that there is a serious situation that needs to be addressed. But we also need to recognize that the recent round of violence was triggered by the attacks launched by the so-called ARSA terrorists. We feel deeply for the suffering and plight of all affected communities. Rakhine, Muslim, Dainet, Moro, Thet, Myanmarji, and Hindu. They are all victims of violence and terrorism. Terrorism constitutes one of the most serious threats to international peace and security. It has no place in our civilized world. I'm sure you will agree with me when I say that we cannot condone terrorism in any form and manifestation. The government of Myanmar has strongly condemned the acts of terror committed by AISA in northern Rakhine, the highest Islamic organization in Myanmar, the all Myanmar Islamic religious organization, as well as the Interfaith Dialogue Group of Myanmar, have expressed their solidarity with the government and issued statements condemning the acts of terror committed by AISA. They stress that no religion can condone violence that results in the loss of life and property. They express the support for the government's efforts to address the situation in Rakhine and its endeavors to promote national reconciliation and peace in the entire country. In this regard, we welcome the statement of the United Nations Secretary General and many other representatives around the table condemning the acts of terrorism. The government of Myanmar will work to ensure that the fight against terrorism will not distract us from our commi commitment to bring peace, stability, and development in Rakhine State. It is striving to restore normalcy. There have been no armed clashes and clearance operations since September the 5th. Second, I wish to stress there is no ethnic cleansing and no genocide in Myanmar. Ethnic cleansing and genocide are serious charges and they should not be used lightly. It would be a sad commentary of our times if we allowed emotions to cloud our view and assert that what is happening in Rakhine is ethnic cleansing without first undertaking a legal review and making a judicial 
determination. I can assure you that the leaders of Myanmar who have been struggling so long for freedom and human rights will never espouse policy of genocide and ethnic cleansing and that the government will do everything to prevent it. As clearly stated by the State Councillor Dawn San Suu Kyi in an address to the diplomatic corps in Naypyidaw on the 19th of September, we condemn all human rights violation and violence. We are committed to the restoration of peace, stability and rule of law throughout the country. Security forces have been instructed to adhere strictly to the code of conduct in carrying out security operations, to exercise all due restraint, and to take full measures to avoid collateral damage and the harming of innocent civilians. Myanmar is one of the most ethnically diverse countries in the world. It is home to 135 officially recognized ethnic groups, each with its own distinctive culture and adherence to a variety of religions, including Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, and Hinduism. Religious groups have been living in harmony throughout our history. The situation that we face today is due to terrorism and is not based on religion. It should be noted that Muslims are not a minority in northern Rakhine. They constitute 95% of the total population there. What is little known is that vast majority of Muslims did not abandon the hearth and home. While there have been an exodus, more than 50% of the Muslim villages in northern Rakhine remain intact and are living in peace with their neighbors, whether they be Hindus or Buddhists. Representatives of the diplomatic corps in Yangon, accompanied by the media, will visit northern Rakhine on Monday. They will have the opportunity to witness firsthand the situation on the ground. I'm happy to note that the government of Myanmar has extended an invitation to the Secretary General and the Under Secretary General to visit Myanmar. We hope to welcome them in the near future to enhance cooperation between Myanmar and the United Nations. Third, the government of Myanmar is fully aware of its primary responsibility to address the humanitarian situation. We have been providing assistance to all displaced persons without discrimination. We are collaborating with the Red Cross movement and donor countries, all represented in this room, to provide assistance expeditiously in accordance with humanitarian principle. The ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance on Disaster Management, better known as AHA Center, has agreed to work with us to deliver humanitarian assistance to all displaced persons. Fourth, we are concerned by reports that thousands of people have crossed into Bangladesh. We would like to fathom the real reasons for the exodus. We will talk to these people who have fled, as well as those who have opted to remain in the villages. The vast majority of those who fled did so out of fear. Fear was instilled in the hearts by the terrorists. Some hundreds of Muslim villagers recently left their homes and headed towards the border, notwithstanding the efforts of the regional authorities to persuade them to return to the villages. The villagers voiced the concerns regarding the availability of humanitarian assistance in a sustained manner as well as fears they are becoming a minority in their own area. It is learned that the villagers, villagers have been threatened over the telephone and that they have been persuaded by the fellow men who are already in Bangladesh to join them. Moreover, the villagers remain fearful of retaliation by the AISA, following the re revelation, revelation that a large number of Hindu villagers have been massacred 
and buried in mass graves. The authorities have assured the villagers that they would be provided assistance and security. However, some have chosen to cross over to Bangladesh. There has been a growing clamor for repatriation of refugees who have fled from Myanmar to Bangladesh. I would like to stress here that Myanmar is prepared to start the verification process at any time. Bangladesh and Myanmar are neighbors, and our two neighbors have had the experience of such a repatriation process in 1993. We are working to enhance relations with Bangladesh. I have met with the foreign minister of Bangladesh in, here in New York last week. The Minister of the Office of the State Council will visit Dhaka this weekend to further discuss matters of mutual concern and to find ways and means to move ahead with regard to the situation on our border. We have also invited the Minister of Home Affairs of Bangladesh. We will welcome him at any time he is able to come to Myanmar and hope to take forward our cooperation on border security matters. Our stated willingness to discuss the issue of repatriation gives the lie to the assertion that there is a policy of ethnic cleansing on our part. Mr. President, the new government in Myanmar inherited a challenging situation in Rakhine State and, ha and has had to deal with the consequences of actions by other actors. The current crisis is due to the acts of terrorism perpetrated by ARSA. To address the situation, the government launched a number of initiatives, including the Rakhine Advisory Commission, chaired by Dr. Kofi Annan. The recommendations of the Kofi Annan Commission represent a viable roadmap forward. We have embraced the recommendations of that report. An implementation committee for the recommendations has already been formed and work is in progress. Two meetings have already been held. We must give this committee time and space to go forward. At this critical juncture, in the life of our young democracy. It is imperative, it is imperative that the international community join hands with us to ensure that democracy takes firm root and that we will succeed in carrying out our responsibility to establish peace, stability, and development in Rakhine and the whole of Myanmar. That is the only way we can solve the conundrum in Rakhine. The Security Council must refrain from taking measures that exacerbate rather than alleviate the situation in Rakhine State. It can and must do no less. I thank you, Mr. President.